Hello and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where a group of geographically dispersed pals gather on the medium of the internet and solve an escape room of the ears. My name is editor Jonathan David Charles Saunders II and this is part two a farewell to the heist. If you haven't listened to part one, then none of what's about to happen will make much sense at all, but I'll leave it to you to decide whether that bothers you or not. For those of you who have diligently counted down the days, waiting for the dramatic conclusion, I'll give you a little refresher on what has already transpired. But before I do, allow me to thank a few of the people who made all of this possible, and that's Mum, Dad and Jack Daniels. I'm kidding, sort of. I am, of course, referring to our legion of Patreons, the good folk around the globe who give a few doubloons each month to keep the airwaves open and the legal objections manageable. Their number is great, but today I'd like to especially thank Dave Shaw, Hill Burton, Will Ryder, Myrie, and Teresa Lander, our news Patreon. Teresa, I am honoured by your commitment to my mental unravelling. Before we launch into tonight's episode, let me fill you in on the story so far. The elder god Cthulhu has a northern brother, Cthulhu, and Cthulhu has sent our team with a gravy cover check in hand into a high street bank. The team are now locked inside the bank manager's office as a heist plays out on the CCTV screens before them. Power and phone lines have been cut off. The team have escaped a cell in one end of the room and found a variety of items, but they haven't yet found a way to restore power to the room. Helping them along their way has been a cowardly security guard called Frank, who has whispered advice to them through the air vents. Crucially, the team has just found a key in a hat and are about to use it to unlock the bank manager's desk. And now, as there is nobody else to ask, I'll ask you, dear listener, the question. Are you ready to enter the infinite escape room? You are? Well, that's lucky. Okay, so there are six main draws. And then the two knobs sticking out, one at the top on the left, one at the top on the right. So we'll go left one, left two, left three, top to bottom, and right one, right two, right three. Okay? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fine. So left one is empty. Left two has a brass canister in it that rattles a bit when you pick it up. Mm-hmm. Left three has a glow-in-the-dark sign in the base of it that says emergency power pull handle and a red handle sticking out of the rear wall of the drawer. (gasps) Ooh. Fun. Can we pull it? Uh, You can. Let's pull it. So as you pull the handle, with a hissing sound, a section of the floor in the cell area rises up on a hinge, revealing an emergency generator. Ooh. Ooh, that's going to be noisy. What would you like to look at now? Can we finish looking at what's in the drawers just in case? Yeah. Absolutely, you can. Uh, so we were on, that was the whole left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the top right drawer has a two-meter-long, thick industrial power cable with a big crocodile clip on each end. Mm-hmm. The second drawer has some calipers in them, very precise, you know, to the fraction of a millimeter measuring calipers. And the third drawer has quite the assortment. Uh, There is an industrial power socket, a voltage meter, and a control dial. And the brass canister that we took out of left two, Mm -hmm. can we open it? Can we discern what's inside it? You can indeed. Inside is a small blue gemstone. Oh. Intriguing. Can we just... I know that we've just found the um, key and everything, that's great, but can we just go back to the coat that's hanging Mm -hmm. on the coat rack and just check what's in it? Very good. Inside one of the pockets of the coats are a set of cufflinks. Either of them missing a blue stone? No, no, no. Not that kind of cufflinks. Take a look at them and describe what you see, please. Uh, Ignore the text on the case. It's not relevant. The cufflinks themselves are the item you're interested in. So the text says... (laughs) (laughs) Um, They're fingerprints. They're fingerprints and cufflinks. Yes, they are. (gasps) Ooh. Okay. Very good. Oliver Twist designs. Sorry, had to. Yes, thank you. Thank you, (laughs) Alex. You born troll. Okay, you have a cufflinks. Oh, that's an interesting cufflink. Um, Mm. Okay. Um, I don't suppose they link to the um, knobs on the desk in any way. Uh, No. Do you want to give one of the knobs a tug? Yep. 
I knew you wouldn't let me down. I mean... Uh, so there's one on the left near the top, one on the right near the top. Which one? Left first. Tugging on the small knob reveals a thin hidden drawer. Recessed into it is a small... Um, it's a small metal ring with a glass panel on it. There's something below the ring, but it's it's dark. You can't see what it is. But we have a torch. What what happened? Do, I get a sense that possibly the cufflink fits into it exactly. Can we put the left cuff, cufflink in there? You you can put it on there. Nothing happens. Shall we, can we fight, kickstart this generator and get power back? Do you want to take a look at the generator? Yeah. Okay, it's a small electrical generator with a pull cord on the left side to start it. There is an industrial power socket in the generator and a large brass stud with a label on it. Ah, the label says. Uh, There is a, I'll come back to that, there is a very long coiled industrial power cable tucked in next to the generator. So we can plug that into our two meter long power cable? Uh, you can't because that's got um, crocodile clips on it on each end. Ah. But there is an industrial power socket in the bottom right drawer of mm, the desk. There is. So we can plug it in. To what, though? Well, you can plug one end of it into the generator and one end of it into the desk. Can we try that? And also, let's yeah. have a pull at the right-hand knob just in case there's a missing piece. Sure. The right-hand knob... I only call the knobs, kind of like saying it. Yeah, I thought uh, so. In the right, the right hand knob reveals another thin hidden drawer. Recessed into it is a keypad. Number zero to nine, enter, delete, up and down. It's currently dark. Okay, so we need to get power to this desk to get the keypad working. So I've just put the sign on the generator into the Dropbox. Could one of you give it a little read? Generator sign, I see it. Generator sign is another warning sign with a little spiky electrical arrow. And it says, Earth Terminal, warning. In the event of overload, this terminal will become live. Thank you. Oh, um, oh, oh. We could it's... overload the security shutter. Yes. We've got a crocodile clip power cable, so we could do it. Okay. I will leave okay. that to your superior knowledge because I... Uh, we'll admit to blanking on this. Let's fix the desk. We better do the desk first. I get the feeling trying to do anything else is breaking the puzzle. You can't break it. Oh, challenge accepted. I know, right? Um, But we we did think about this. Um, You're you're all having good thoughts. It's all good, but yeah. Okay. Don't worry about breaking. Let's get get power back to the... uh, I like the fish pun. To the desk, yeah. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I, like, yeah um, I, I, I do also just because he said you know be careful where you hang your hat or where you hang your coat or whichever it was. Mm-hmm. We have a really good close look at all of the coat hooks. That's a good show. Okay, give me detail. What are you doing here? I'm looking at the actual hooks themselves to see whether there's anything. Uh, if I pull one of them or if I I don't know yank on it, like does does it come away from the wall? Is there anything hidden there? As you pull on one of the coat hooks with a thunk, the giant pitch on the left side of the room drops down, revealing an alcove behind it and an industrial safe. I knew it. Uh, can we have a look at the safe? Okay. Inside the alcove is a safe door with a rotary lock on it. To the right of the safe are some instructions on how to use it. Excellent. I, I knew that painting would move. See? To the nightmare at the core of this room. Oh, no. Here we go. The safe instructions are there. But don't worry. Because of the medium in which we are doing this, you are not actually exposed to the nightmare. Okay. You're safe because you've got me. Safe, as it were. Um, Oh. Operating instructions. Read first. At the top of the dial ring, an index is provided for opening. Please note, this is at the 12 o'clock position. And indeed it is. This is a precision lock. Therefore, extreme care must be used to align the combination numbers with the index. If the dial ring is turned too far and the target number is overshot, the attempt must be abandoned and the safe reset before the next attempt. Each time a selected number is aligned with the opening index, a revolution is counted. Note, left is taken to mean anti-clockwise. To unlock, step one. Turn dial to the left, stopping when the number is aligned with the opening index the fourth time. Step two, 
Turn dial to the right, stopping when the number is aligned with the opening index the third time. 3. Turn dial to the left, stopping when the number is aligned with the opening index the second time. Step 4. Turn dial slowly to the right until the locking bolt retracts. You will feel some resistance. That's written in bold. Step 5. Pull the lock housing towards you using the handle. To reset after failed attempt, turn dial to the left at least four full revolutions. I should add at this point that we used a real safe for this. Ah. And that was a mistake. <laughs> mm. uh, but yes, well read, Onikos. Uh, and that was all correct. Okay. Great. And let's assume that we can follow those instructions exactly as they are meant. We've got calipers for exact measurements. Oh. Uh, you have, yes. Not that I think you need them, but just for it's all about precision and obviously you emphasize that the calipers are for precision mm. that's true that's true that that was an unintentional synergy um this is a hand operated safe so as long as you're careful with it you should be able to get the numbers that that's you want fine. to get the question is we don't know what number that is indeed the rub oh um we have the numbers on the certificates we do but but they're letters but we don't, and numbers, letters and numbers yeah. C5. the dates aren't letters and numbers though that's correct. Mm. It's a lot of... Action. Ah, yeah, but if you think... Oh, oh, hang on. Because you've got three certificates. There are three times you've got to turn the dial. The numbers, I should add, well, go from zero to presumably 99. That is correct. And Jonathan said there was no math, so we don't have to add or subtract or do any multiplying. You do not. I'm a man of my word. And it is a single number. Mm. Oh. So there's three numbers. You're after there's three numbers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. There's three steps. Turn dial to the left, stopping when the numbers align with the opening index the fourth time. Turn dial to the right, stopping when the numbers align with the opening index the third time. And turn dial to the left, stopping when the numbers align with the opening index the second time. And there's single numbers, single digits. Uh, well, the the dial goes from zero to ninety nine, so it would be any number from zero to ninety nine. Interesting. D would it be as simple as the first number is four, the second number is three, and the third number is two? Would you like to try that? Yeah. It does not work. Great. Um, worth a try. Hang on. I'm looking at the image of the high street in Broadstairs, and you've mm -hmm. got the garage is number 58. Do you want to try 58? No, wait. Uh, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. And then halfway mm -hmm. down the street, you've got a quite clear number 36. Okay. But then I'm missing a third. Why am I missing a third? The only reason I'd be missing a third is because there isn't a third as a red herring, potentially. There are no red herrings in this room. But also, how would you know which which order to do things in? Indeed. Mm. And I have already told you. Oh, that's just what? horrible. Yeah. What does the letter <laughs> say? Mm. That's not very clear. We've known each other such a long time, you probably know it all already. Who I am and where I've been. Very good, Onikos. We Who I am is Winston out. Sterling. Mm -hmm. Where I've where been. I've been. Garage above Belvedere Road. Yeah. He never left. Num number fifty-eight. He's fifty-three. Yeah. Wait, says Sterling. Fifty-three, the fourth generation of his family. My old man lived above the third shop down from the bank. Fifty-three oh. is the first number. Then, third shop down from the bank. That's number thirty-six. Thirty-six, and then yes, but I, we were in our second year together. Oh, Alad, you absolute genius! Above the garage on Belvedere Road, garage. So fifty-three is the first number, and then it's thirty-six, and then it's fifty-eight. Yeah, let's try that. The safe opens. <gasps> yes, Alad. Well done. Very nicely done. Mike drop. Yes. Yeah, that was stunning, Alad. Well done. That's amazing. Wow. We we actually had to change that puzzle in the room to make it easier because people, uh, partly because actually a lot of the time it was because people couldn't do the safe, even with the right numbers. Right. But um, some teams just couldn't fish out the right numbers at all. So yeah, well done. I could see that. Oh, well done, Alad. Very good. The safe is open. Hurrah. Uh, inside the safe, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, seven pages of notes. <gasps> <clears throat> As you turn the dial, you feel it resist you slightly and then give way as the door swings open. Inside the safe, you find a small pink gemstone and a 
cable. The cable is about two feet long and has a five millimeter jack on each end. Have we found anything that has a similar jack? No. No. Um, can we try putting... You've found nothing in this room that does something similar. The pink, um, the pink gemstone in the little opening that... Um, in the little metal you ring. You can, nothing happens. What about the blue one? Uh, you can, nothing happens. Ah, box. Um, anything inside I... the cufflinks box apart from the cufflinks? No. Could I give you a tiny steer? Yeah, please yes. do. Yes. You haven't actually turned on the generator yet. No, we haven't. You've plugged it in. Oh, I was leaving. Left. I was oh, leaving leaving that to Alan as well because I don't I don't understand these things. Let's let's turn the Is there an on right? button? Yeah. All right. There's a pull cord. We have got to pull it. Uh, there's a pull cord. You start it like a lawnmower. Great. Let's do that. Lovely. So with a couple of pulls, the generator rumbles into life. The wall lights flicker on, illuminating the room. The electrical device in the top left drawer of the desk lights up red. The keypad lights up blue. And on the screens before you, you see the following. It's like the uh, welcome music to uh, an American news program. Oh, here's a man opening a safe. Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Looks like you're in a pickle. Thankfully, you purchased the... Eversafe 3000. Ah, Eversafe 3000. So you're safe. Simply pop in your eight-digit security code, prime the countermeasures, and watch them take effect. Okay, what did you just see? Um, a man trying to open a safe saying, Oh, uh, you seem to be in a pickle, um, mm -hmm. but thankfully you've purchased the Eversafe 2000. 3,000? 3,000. Upgraded model. And he says, pop in the security code, prime the countermeasures, and watch it take effect. It's an eight-digit okay. security code. Uh, yes. So I've just put the Eversafe passcode screen into the chat. Um, there is a an infinity symbol with... oh. Four jewels, a pink one, a red one, a blue one, and a green one, going from left to right. Um, and under that is written the word Eversafe 3000. Passcode XXXXXXX. Okay. So we found two out of four jewels, but not the red or the green. Um, the emergency button. Um, mm -hmm. The emergency button. The word, well, you know, the... the, the, the um, Silent the alarm button. On the desk. Yeah. Oh, silent alarm button. Yes. It does. It does that have a red gemstone in it? Uh, no. It had a red glow, but yeah. that was it just being turned on. Okay. Um, what about the laser box thingy? Is there a red gemstone in there? No. Um, there were lights on the wall somewhere no that red were red and green. There. No. There's, there's no. Interesting idea, but no. Hmm. Okay, so you've got power. You've got the screen asking you for a passcode. Mm -hmm. We've got infinity stones. <laughs> and we've got cufflinks with um, fingerprints. fingerprints in them. Hmm. Oh, uh, the drawers that had that weird, that sort of thing that we couldn't quite work out. Is there anything changed now that it's got power? Uh, the thing you couldn't quite work out is glowing red. Ah, mm. and it wasn't. Oh. Correct. But we tried putting the pink and the blue thing on it stone on it we, you we did, did but, but there was no power power can we try it again but the pink one okay maybe. what are you doing the pink one let's put the pink one on it nothing happened the blue one put the blue one on it nothing happened both of no. them together nothing happens hmm. um one of the cufflinks as you press the cufflink Aha. into the fingerprint scanner the right hand painting lowers to revealing that's the painting of the high street. It reveals a grid of five mil ports and a small alcove with a green gemstone in it. Okay, let's pick up the gemstone. Now we've got three out of four. Um, what happens if we hold the other cufflink on the little bedoodly deck? Nothing further. No. Okay, okay, but we've now got jack points or jack ports. Yep, I uh, put a screenshot into the Dropbox. It's literally just called screenshot and then a bunch of numbers. Apologies. But that is roughly what it looks like. Hang on. 
I kind of feel like I know what I'm expecting to see. Yeah. Oh, uh, yep. That's yep. fine. Okay. Uh, easy. Right. Okay. That's fine. So the jack points will correspond with the certificates because if you think back to certificates, they had B2 yes. and so forth as testers. So yes. realistically, I need two windows open so I can cross reference yeah. where the jack points need to go. Uh, right. Fine. Bring it on. Oh, okay. What are you doing? So certificate, we have got B2 and C2. So this is, oh, hang on. This is even neater then, isn't it? Because each certificate has got, it shows where it corresponds to B1 and D5. And certificate three is D2 and C3. So how many jack leads have we got? One. Fudge. Um, let's let's try all three different combinations then. Yeah, let's try B2 and C2 first. As you insert the jack leads into those ports, the backlight of the jacks, which is currently red, flashes green for a moment, but then goes back to red. Something is preventing it from working. Um, try one of the other combinations? The same thing happens with all three. Okay, so there's something stopping it. Is that because we haven't got three cables? So we need more cables. Um, is there anything else in the room that we have maybe been told about but have already forgotten about because we can't actually physically uh, see them? Golden question. So the only thing I can think of that you were told about but have glossed over is the mug. Oh, let's Next have a look the at the telephone. Mug. Oh, and the telephone. Let's do the mug first, shall we? Yeah. There you go. The three mug images are in the Dropbox. Three mug images. My goodness. How you spoil us. Okay. Mug one. Oh, good Lord. 8.23 hmm. millimeter. So it's, um, it's, uh, it seems to be a mug that sort of details different cuts of diamond. So it shows Correct. like a little caliper adjusted to 8.23 millimeter. So maybe we should check what our caliper is set to. Um, and it says the cut determines how a gemstone is measured. And then it's got an example of an oval cut and a heart cut. Ah, okay. And that's mug side one. Mug side two is is the other side of the mug, and it's the British Gemology Museum. Standardised measurement of gemstones and a round cut, which is very much similar to the si to the kind of um, image that we saw on the Eversafe thing for the gemstones. All of the gemstones you've recovered are round cut. Yes. Okay. So measurements. And let's see. And then Mug 3. Ad, would you like to give Mug 3 a read? Mug 3 says, measurements are rounded to the nearest whole number. Example, 14.763 mm. millimetres is record recorded as 15 millimetres. Oh, Michael Collins, you, <laughs> you misspelled recorded. 14.313 millimetres is recorded as 14 millimetres. To hell. And then there's an image of a round cut, an emerald cut, a radiant cut, and a oval cut. I would like it no noted for the record that Mr. Michael James Collins, who designed this mug for me, that misspelling was not meant to be there. When you say for the record, do you mean for the record or for the record? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I walked straight into that. Oh my God. I can't believe I said that. That is excellent. That was possibly the stupidest thing I've ever done, and I've got kids. <laughs> okay, lovely. That was a good summary of the mug. Okay, so we need to measure... Well, we don't, we still need to find the last gemstone, don't we? Um, but also we need to measure the other gemstones, and then the order that they are in, uh, that's the that's the code. Yeah. So but where is the other gemstone? gemstone? Yeah. Have we checked telephone. everywhere? Ah, telephone. Telephone. It should now have a dial tone. Mm. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Are you phoning? Yeah. We are, but we're calling 999. I think would be a good shout. Uh, are we? It doesn't work. Are we doing? No, because it's the external services are cut off. So we need so to dial zero. zero and prepare a password. So let's hope yeah. that the password is gone fishing. Okay. You dial zero, and this is what you hear.
Welcome to Eversafe, secure by design. To activate security systems, please speak your personal password clearly, following the tone. Gone fishing. Gone fishing. Welcome to Eversafe, secure by design. I'm sorry, that password was incorrect. Have a nice day. Bollocks. I thought that might be the case. I cannot tell you how joyous it was to listen to teams at length try various passwords and have to wait at length to find out that they were wrong. It was lovely. Um, okay, great. So you're clearly excited about listening to us constantly say the wrong thing. Um, can we try Belvedere Road? Yeah, it's a good shout. I am in my very, very, very magnanimous generosity going to tell you that, that will not work okay that's very you are on the right track oh with gone fishing okay well then let's look at the fish again um because that's that was our, our original idea can we yeah. say hogfish that's a good shout welcome to eversafe secure by design to activate security systems, please speak your personal password clearly, following the tone. Hogfish. Welcome to Eversafe, secure by design. I'm sorry, that password was incorrect. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, you bastard. You swine, you are having so much fun with this. <laughs> Uh, we're going to ring it again and we're going to say carp. Here we Welcome go. Welcome to Eversafe, secure by design. To activate security systems, please speak your personal password clearly, following the tone. Carp. Carp. When you say carp, some text appears on the screen saying personal password accepted insert code fuck okay oh now we need a code now you need the code oh god damn it uh oh that's the good? code that we need based on all of the gemstones which we still have not found no we haven't we're one you have found them we haven't found all four of them have we wait we obviously have we just don't realize we found the fourth <laughs> oh he's uh, being evil <laughs> right oh this is so beautiful this is where we'd, we would know if we were physically in the room, wouldn't we? Is it in one of the jars of fishing bait? No. Is it in the torch? No. <laughs> is it in the safe? You can see it. Oh. Already, it has not been hidden from you. It has not been obscured from you. Since when? Since the beginning? No, no. It's not on a tattoo or anything. <laughs> you raise your shirt and fine. No. In fact, Onikos, you've not only seen it, you've described it. Oh, it's on the mug. Is it on the mug? Take a look. You tell me. Oh. Um, I'm betting it is on so the mug, but what colour is it on the mug? It's no, the little red. Mug. It's the little red one in the calipers. Oh, god damn it. Let's okay, well let's try the little red one in the calipers then. Let's let's measure that and see how that goes. But if not, is it then? The little mug two one. So you have some physical calipers, yes. and then there is the image of the calipers on the mug. Yes. These are separate things. Right, let's use the physical calipers just to yes. check, okay. just in case the mug isn't to scale. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, sure. Fine. I mean, hey, if the spelling can't be right, what hope have we got for the calipers? Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh, or for the, okay. for the uh, Onikos, scale of the... You, Onikos, you yeah. have... You have already told us the number. Oh, okay, the so that's 8.23, so then that, the number is 8, so that would be 0, 08 okay. for the red and code. As you measure it, measure the image on the mug with the actual calipers, you confirm it is roughly the same thing. Okay, great. So then we need to measure all of the other mugs, and uh, not a mug, sorry, uh, all of the other <laughs> gemstones. There's one, I think she's losing it. <laughs> I think I lost it a long, long time ago. Um, if indeed with I ever calipers? had it. Yes, with the calipers... Okay, um, the pink gemstone mm -hmm. comes to 9.65 millimetres. 9.65, so that's 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. The blue gemstone comes to 12.44 millimetres. 12.44, so that's 12. So we've got 10, and 0, the, 8, 12, and... 
the green gemstone comes to 14.09 millimeters. Okay, so then 1008, 12, 14 is the passcode we're going to give to the, I don't know. Yeah, where, I agree wherever with that. We're going, wherever we're giving the password to. Let's give it into the screen that's now asking for it. Yes. Lovely. With the keypad, uh, as you press enter, the screen flashes and takes you to, well, to the next section. So. Countermeasures. Note, countermeasures are primed in two stages. Yellow equals one stage primed. Green equals primed firing. One secure okay. volt. Two clean volt. Three high voltage. Voltage spelled V A U L T A G E. I've just I've got my arms up in the air to accept the glorious praise for that pun. Nice. Glorious, glorious. Thank you. Thank you, world. Thank you. Oh, Wasn't sure if it was a pun world. or a genuine mistake. <laughs> you have ten minutes and fifteen seconds remaining. Yeah. I, okay. I, I don't understand what we've been told. So we countermeasures. Need to... Okay. A primed in two stages. Yellow is one stage primed. Green is primed. Right, okay. That text is at the top, and then it has one colon secure vault, two colon clean vault, three colon high voltage. They are all currently grayed out, so you can't select them with the keypad. They're primed in two stages. Yellow means that one stage has been primed, and green means that they are primed and firing. We still haven't found two jack cables. Oh. Can we try the jack cables again? Uh, you can try a jack cable. What are you doing with it? Where are you inserting it, Howard? You don't want to know. How desperate has, <laughs> how desperate has this situation got? Uh, I was hoping if we'd done the Eversafe, they might be active, but I'm guessing not. Well, we want to do the B, okay, B what, something what to... Tell me what yeah. you're doing. Uh, B2 to C2. Same as before. Uh, nope, doesn't work. Okay. What's the other one? What uh, are the other ones? B1 to D5. B1 to D5, the jack bat light stays green and the secure vault option on the screen goes yellow. Oh. Okay, click on that if we can. So there's one part of this that you're missing. Um, you were told about it, but you never really investigated it again. So I'm just going to go back to it um, to highlight it for you. So... Where you plug the power into the desk, there wasn't just a power socket. Oh, there was the there. There was also a power switch and a voltage dial. Oh, okay. Um, but you never took a look at them. So I've just put them into the Dropbox now. That is the power switch and the voltage dial, uh, and that is their current settings. So you can see there's um a notch on the um power switch for for what it's set to, and a needle for the voltage dial for what it's set to. Onikos, could you describe the power switch, please? The 12 o'clock position has standby. Then it says CM1, CM2, CM3 at the 6 o'clock position and max at sort of the 8 o'clock position. And the notch... Uh, and the notch the, is currently the at the standby. Lovely. Thank you, Onikos. Alid, could you describe the voltage dial? So the voltage dial looks like a speedometer of a car, Uh and it go and it goes from 110 to 220 to 480, 600, 980, 1240, 2980, 4620, and 12470. With 12470 being in red, the needle is currently sat on 110. Thank you. So we need to get that up to 4620 really, and that'll blow it. Um, let's turn the um, dial, the power. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why not? Let's turn it to CM1 and see, see what happens. Okay, you turn the, the power switch to CM1. The voltage goes up to 480. And the... Ah, too many things in front of me! The voltage goes up to 480. And the secure vault option on the screen goes green. As it goes green, the other screen next to it shows you what is happening inside the vault. So at this point, I'd like you to play the video labelled right underscore CM1. Okay. And if you could describe to me... Actually, let's play it together because I like this one. So open it up, guys. Let me know when you've opened it up and I'll count you in. I'm holding the timer while you Hold do up. that. I'm okay. ready when yep. you are. Right, three, two, one, play. 
they're loading up. They're in the vault. Yeah. They've got bags. They're loading up from... That trolley was there before with the cash on it. Yeah. Looks like books of cash. Oh, and oh, oh. and the door that they meant to... That they were trying to escape through... They're locked has in. ...has just shut. And now they're having an argument. They've just... Um, oh, one of them has shot at the door and it ricocheted and um, hit his... He's comment. killed... He's killed his friend, is he? Oh, there's a smear of blood on the wall now. There is. Has he killed his friend? Almost. I don't know if he's dead yet, but he's definitely wounded. Yes, he's taken a bullet wound and they are now locked in the so safe. locked them okay. in. Way. Okay. Six minutes. Okay. Um, turn the dial to CM2. The voltage jumps past 800 and the clean vault icon on the screen goes yellow. Okay. Oh, turn it up again. Turn it up again. Yeah. Let's sort of turn it to CM3. Uh, the clean vault icon on the screen goes grey and nothing oh. else. Oh, crap. Um, turn, turn it, it back. No, turn it higher. Pro- turn it higher. Oh, okay, sure. Turn it to max. If you turn it to max, the generator overloads and cuts down. Oh, All shit. the power in the room goes out. But then that should mean that the security shutter drops. Nope. Okay. Wait, you mean yes. open, but no. All right, let's turn it back to CM1, or turn it to standby, and... Um... We need to restart the generator now. Yeah. You do. Now, if I was being a prick, I'd make you do all of the passwords again and the phone message again. But I'm not a prick. I'm not a prick, so I'm not going to make you do that. Mm. Uh, The system reboots to exactly where you left it. So there's something we have to do. Um, Oh, God. Uh, Should we try moving the jacks to D2 and C3? Yeah. Okay, when you move to D2 and C3, clean vault goes yellow. And now if we turn... If we turn it to CM2. Yeah. Clean vault flashes green. Right. And shall we all play together? Right underscore CM underscore two. Okay. Yes. Just get Let's... up. Three, two, one, play. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. Is, so the is, guy who got shot dead. is dead. And his buddy is now going, oh, how do he's I open the door? Out. What have I done? Uh, oh, and um, a, uh, a, smoke? a smoke or a vapor has just entered the... Um... Oh, it's cleaning the vault. So it's sanitized. Oh, I see. Yes, of course. Oh, it may be very noxious stuff because the guy seems to be suffering. He's coughing. Oh, and he uh, has seemingly passed out. Ah, Uh, very good. Well done, guys. Cool. That's two down. That's one way to clean a place. Um, Right, which leaves us then with the final stage. If we put the jacks to B2 and C2, which hasn't done anything yet. High voltage goes yellow. Great, and then we turn it to CM3. High voltage goes green. Please fire up your right underscore CM3 underscore videos. Oh. Right, ready when you are. Three, two, one, play. Okay, so this is the tall dude who cut the cable. Oh, he's set an explosive or something by the vault he's door been shot. and it exploded. Oh. Oh, and here comes the bank manager, or... I have to say I'm impressed. Well done. All those hostages will be very thankful, I'm sure. And so am I. Very thankful. You've saved me an awful lot of trouble. I should offer you a car. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. I do it. But then life isn't fair, is it? It's what my old man said. It is short, but... Uh-oh. Frank, what are you doing to us? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you a fighting chance. Right, so Frank has come out. He's a... Sa- he he's thanked us. We were right. If you and- get out of that room... He's going to gas us, is he? Well, there's still air to breathe. You can tell the cop was all about it. Good luck. He's taking the oxygen out of the room. I would like to leave this side the And he's taken all the bags of loot and he's running off. Yeah. Because it was indeed some kind of inside job. And he's run off singing about, I do like to be beside the seaside. Swine. A little rat bastard. We knew it. As Frank makes his exit with the stolen money, a thin sliver of gaseous fumes starts trickling out from a vent beneath the oh, desk. Oh, you bastard. It smells foul and stings your eyes. You don't have long. Right, so we need to find a way of getting uh, out now. 
We need to over, over, we need extend to overload it, don't we? it. So let's, yeah, let's turn it to max. But we've done that once and it didn't work. No, but that was before we had all of the other bits in place. So let's try it now and see what happens. And if, if we have to restart the generator, we'll restart we it again. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And Jonathan's being very kind to us, so he won't make us go through all of the steps again. I'm, I'm very kind, very kind. I'm especially kind with three and a half minutes. Oh, thank you. Uh, as you raise the voltage, you hear a thunk from behind you. A pill-shaped metal bar has descended from the electrical cabinet inside the cell. A pill-shaped? Yeah. Yes. Like a metal bar has sort of dropped down. It's still attached to the electrical cabinet. It's part of it, but it has, yes, kind of fallen Can down. Can we inspect it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's made of brass. Um, it's shiny. It's metal. Yeah, it's like a big handle. So if I draw your attention back to the signage on the electrical cabinet that we talked about at the very, very beginning of the game. Yeah. It says, to prevent overheating in the event of a power surge, the earth terminal will be released. Warning, do not allow the earth terminal to become overloaded. This will result in explosive failure of the security shutter. Maximum voltage, 4,000 volts. Got it. Right. We've got that cable with the crocodile clips. One onto yes. the earth terminal, one onto the generator. Lovely. Let's do that. And and then turn it up to 4,000 volts. You set the control dial in the desk to maximum. The voltage needle is slammed instantly into the danger zone. The tempo of the generator rises rapidly. At first, nothing happens. Then a klaxon sounds and the wall lights all explode at once. The Eversave system overloads, spewing a jumbled collection of videos onto the screen. The electrical panel at the end of the room hums for a moment and then explodes in a shower of sparks releasing the doors and freeing you from the vault. Woohoo! Money is gone. The robbers are dead. Frank has made his fortune, but at least you got away with your lives. Before you can congratulate yourselves, though, as you breathe the fresh seaside air, something wet falls onto your face from above. Seagull shit. I was going to say. No. Fish. Oh. Worse. Gravy. The emergency dentistry of Cthulhu's moor hoves into view. He blinks his single pork pie eye at you and says... Well, where's my check? Congratulations, you've solved my puzzle. Woo wow. That was good. <laughs> that was a really good With puzzle. one minute ten left. How long? Minute ten, I'll take that. Yeah. Very good, guys. Well done. Dear listeners, thank you for listening to episode two of Farewell to the Heist. We're going to go to the pub now and have a very well-earned drink after escaping Lloyd's Bank. We wish you well. See you next time on the Infinite Escape Room. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.